This is just a quick video to address a question that comes up on a regular basis. If you've been watching my channel then you may be familiar with this device. It is of course the transistor processor kit that I supply. And one of the questions I get asked quite a lot is uh, can it be sped up? That is can the clock speed be increased and what is the limiting factor for the clock speed? Now recently I had a question whether it will be possible if I change the layout uh, to get the machine to run a lot faster and the short answer is no. Um, you would have to do far more than that. It is a transistor processor uh, so all the active elements within it are transistors. There are no ICs other than the ROM. Now when you look inside a DTL or TTL device for example the circuits are quite complex they're not just a simple transistor and uh, that's okay when you're building uh, or manufacturing ICs uh, but when you are making these circuits discreetly that means every time you add a resistor to one of the transistor circuits that effectively adds 2000 resistors because there are 2000 transistors in the processor so it's very much a case of designing the circuit so that it will work and designing it so that it's practical to build and that's what I did. But to address the question as to whether it will be possible to speed up the processor kit I thought I'd give some examples here as to how you could go about redesigning the circuits if you really wanted to speed it up. Now the input circuits to the gates are uh, fairly fast anyway because of the, the nature of the way they're arranged. The real limiting factor at the moment is the output from the various logic gates and I'll explain why this is a problem um, by way of a simple demonstration. So what we have here is a very simple circuit and so this is what I've got arranged on the breadboard at the moment. It's a single bipolar transistor. Bear in mind that the processor kit uses bipolar transistors. Um, we have a couple of uh, resistors feeding the base and this is really to simulate the rest of the uh, the gate that's feeding this particular transistor. So this represents the output of the, the gate. And uh, I've got two resistors here in series. I'll explain why there's two here in a minute, but you can imagine for the moment that's just a single resistor. And uh, what we have uh, is the scope is hooked up so that the uh, blue trace is at the input signal and that's been fed from the signal generator. Signal generator is set to give 2 uh, volts peak to peak and it's a 50 ohm source load so this is um, giving a fairly squared off uh, square wave input to the circuit. And then the yellow trace on the scope is connected to the output which is the collector of the transistor. At the moment it's set to 100 kilohertz and you can see on the scope it's looking quite reasonable. The uh, output, the yellow trace is, is not too bad. Uh, we will get ringing of course on this uh, test and some noise uh, because of the, the way it's laid out but um, it's really the, uh, the, the differences between the two signals that we're interested in at this point. So what I'll start to do is increase the the clock speed and we'll go up to 500 kilohertz and you can see it's still not too bad and as long as we're switching then that should be good enough. We'll go up to 1 megahertz and what you can see starting to happen now is there's actually a delay between the blue switching edge and when the yellow edge starts to switch you can kind of ignore the slope that's really a function of the uh, load resistor so that's really uh, this resistor value you could reduce this value and have a faster edge um, up to the point of course where you don't want to blow the uh, transistor up. Um, but the interesting thing here is this delay and what we'll do is we'll actually measure that delay and see uh, how long it is. So we'll go from the point where the input edge switches and it's 66 nanosecond delay um, from the point when the edge 
rises to when the output starts to fall. So I'll go up to 2 megahertz and we'll leave the triggering exactly as it is. And you can see that did not affect this whatsoever. So this is nothing to do with the frequency at which we are switching. Um, this is a function of the transistor itself and you see you get a similar effect on the output and we'll go up to 3 megahertz and again you can see it still had no effect on the rate and we'll go up to 4 megahertz. Now of course the problem we're going to get here is that at some point because there's a delay in this switching it's going to cause the uh, rising edge of the output signal to kind of meet the falling edge and at that point it will cease switching altogether. So to see what that point is we'll keep increasing the frequency. So we're now at 5 megahertz and you can see we're getting to the point where it's going to start to struggle to switch at all soon. 6 megahertz and now we're at the point where if we go beyond this we're not going to be switching the output the way we want to. So we'll go up to 7 megahertz and we can see that the output is now starting to fail and as we go to still high frequencies then the output signal kind of just disappears so now we're not getting proper switching of the output at all so we can kind of say that the maximum speed we can go to in this mode is we'll probably we'll be generous and say uh, six megahertz so in this configuration our maximum frequency is six megahertz so I'll just make a note of that Okay, so this layout will give us 6 megahertz. It's not too bad, but bear in mind this is kind of uh, unloaded. We're not getting any significant load on the output, so uh, we're being fairly kind, but we'll be consistent throughout the test and uh, keep the output loading the same. So how can we go about increasing this? I showed various techniques in a previous video, but I thought I'd go a little bit further today. There are many different ways you can improve the performance of transistor circuits, but bear in mind what I'm talking about here is improving um, the circuits that are used in the transistor processor, uh, rather than trying to design an uh, all singing and dancing uh, RF transistor circuit. Now to try and explain why we're seeing this delay in the first place, we need to look at what a transistor actually is and the representative circuit of that is this. This is not really accurate, it's not uh, saying this is what's inside a transistor but this is how you can look at it in terms of uh, the way it behaves when you apply uh, a step signal to the input. So effectively we have um, this capacitor and this is the, um, the capacitor that's formed because of the way that the transistor is made and the problem with the switching delay is once this transistor is charged up um, firstly you have to charge it up which is obviously going to take a bit of time but also then you have to wait for it to discharge and depending on the type of transistor that uh, delay can be quite significant and this is really a problem cause when you drive the transistor into saturation, that is when you uh, apply a voltage to the base, the transistor at some point will start to turn on as the voltage increases, but if you keep going past that point, um, the transistor might have gone into saturation, it's fully turned on, but if you keep increasing or allowing the voltage on this capacitor to increase, then effectively what you end up with is far more voltage on the capacitor than you need to have the transistor fully turned on. And the problem there of course is when you want to turn it back off you have to wait for the capacitor to get back down below the value where the transistor starts to turn off before the transistor will actually start to turn off. And that's why you see the delay on the scope because the transistor is being driven into saturation. A good way around this is to um, put a clamp on the input to make sure that uh, once the transistor is turned fully on or at least partially on then you don't keep increasing the charge on this capacitor and the various clamp circuits that you can use to do this. Um, DTL circuits tend to use a resistor uh, chain in this uh, location um, but a more effective way is to use a diode clamping system and there are several different ways you can do that. 
I'll modify the circuit on the breadboard and show you the uh, the first one and then we'll see if that has any improvement on the switching speed of the circuit. Okay so what I've done here is added a couple of diodes and this is why we have two resistors here so that uh, I could have access to the junction between them and um, as you can see they're arranged to provide a form of clamping to the input and uh, if we now look at the scope I haven't changed any of the settings on here all I've done is plug the two diodes into the breadboard and at 6 megahertz we now see we're getting quite good switching I'll start increasing the frequency again that's 9 megahertz 10 11 so although we're losing the uh, fast switching of the transistor, it is still switching. We're up to 14 megahertz, 15. And if we just needed to switch, then we're up at 20 megahertz. So it is switching. It's not giving us very fast edges, but it should still work. So effectively, we can switch now up to around 20 megahertz, but with uh, a relatively um, poor signal so make a note of that and um, we can see that that has greatly improved things and you can see now that uh, there is no switching on the output of the transistor at all um, there's another form of uh, clamping circuit we can use in fact there are many types but I'll show one more uh, example and uh, see how that improves the performance so we'll just go back down to 6 megahertz so you can have a uh, initial comparison so that's 6 megahertz as you can see you're on the limit of switching without the clamp i'll just uh, put in the next form of clamp okay so as you can see the signal has now really cleaned up we're still at uh, 6 megahertz and the circuit we now have is this it's actually referred to as a Baker clamp but it's one of the uh, uh, various methods you can use for this type of thing and uh, all I've done is taken out the um, 1k resistor added a, a clamping diode and a second clamp and the way this now works is rather than allowing the base to just keep rising and rising as the transistor is turned on this clamps the transistor such that it never fully saturates and by stopping the transistor from saturating it means that as soon as the input changes either up or down then the output will start to change immediately because there is no excess charge within the transistor so as you can see the result of this is a very nice clear signal you'll also notice that um, the amplitude of the outputs dropped so I haven't modified the settings on the scope um, I haven't changed the loading on the output of the circuit. All I've done is added the diodes. Um, and the reason the amplitude is dropped is because the transistor is effectively being clamped at a proportion of its saturation. Um, you can improve this depending on the type of diode that you use. Um, but what we'll do now is increase the clock frequency and see how uh, high we can go. I will turn up the um, gain on the scope so that we're getting a more uh, or clearer um, uh, display on the scope so we can see exactly what the signal is doing but you can see it is very closely tracking the input signal so we'll start to increase the frequency so we're at 9 megahertz that's 14 We'll go back up to 20 as we had before and you can see that even at 20 megahertz we're still getting uh, a very good clear signal on the output of the circuit it's uh, squared off a lot of this uh, um, is ringing so a lot of the distortion is ringing because of the way we have the circuit laid out um, the actual switching is probably somewhat better than we're seeing here um, but that's the circuit that we have here and as you can see putting a simple clamp in adding a, a couple of components uh, really will increase the frequency of operation of this circuit quite uh, dramatically. Um, the only problem doing this of course it would mean adding 4000 diodes to the um, 
design which uh, make it unwieldy and bear in mind that the um, design that I did was only meant to operate at uh, maybe 5 or 10 hertz to demonstrate the operation of a processor it wasn't meant to be a speed machine so um, that's why I didn't uh, concern myself with the speed of operation so the results we end up with are with our simple original circuits um, our absolute limit of switching is 6 megahertz if we put a simple uh, reverse bias clamp on then we are uh, we can switch at 20 megahertz we just get a fairly poor signal uh, and if we put in a a proper clamp then we get a good operation up to 20 megahertz and this circuit will actually operate well beyond this frequency if we wanted it to um, so hopefully that uh, explains uh, firstly why I didn't um, design the process to run at very high speed um, but also uh, how to make these circuits work a lot faster if you really wanted to